Hey, what's up guys? Good to do another cooking video. It is July 4th weekend. It's actually the second Saturday and I'm having an early dinner here. It is uh, 3.30 right now almost and I figure I eat about 4 o'clock or so. I'm going to do a little surf and turf. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the steak and what I did here but this video is going to be mainly to show how to do some salmon on the grill and this is also going to be my first experience with salmon on the grill. And I've cooked a lot of fish before uh, grilling style but it's always been wrapped up in foil uh, it's going to be a little bit scary doing this, you know, straight down on the grill itself because you screw something up and it's going to be very easy to uh, completely fall apart and be mush and disgusting and just fall on your grill and you have a big fat sad face. So, anyway, got my piece of salmon here, but first let me show you the steak real quick to tell you what I did. Have a piece of London broil, trimmed off all the fat. Uh, it's been covered, sitting in the fridge here, marinating a little bit with, um... Uh, marinating, I say that because it's been sitting there for maybe like an hour. It's just my, my quick prep time. But anyway, I have uh, roasted garlic on here, a little bit of onion powder, uh, fresh cracked pepper, and some salt. Very simple, very straightforward. It's on both sides. Like I said, I trimmed all the fat off first, and then I just kind of stabbed it a bunch of times, and I worked in all that uh, roasted garlic. And it is going to be absolutely amazing. So there's our beef, got the fish. I have a fresh piece of um, salmon here, and this is the farmed salmon, not the wild salmon, but a uh, nice fresh piece of it. I'm not really into fish like a lot. I'm not like a fish nut, but uh, I certainly like to have it in my diet, and if it's prepared right, it could be absolutely delicious. But all I did was hit this with some uh, fresh cracked uh, uh, pepper medley, which is just a bunch of different peppercorns, which by the way, the peppercorn is the seed on a berry. Did you know that? Well, now you do. But anyway, I love pepper, all kinds, um, and I hit it with some uh, coarse sea salt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a sauce that we're going to rub this down with, okay? And then we're going to be grilling it. So it's really easy to do. Put this fish off to the side here. Okay, so I got my cutting board. We have a bowl with a little bit of melted butter in here. It's not much, maybe... Uh, two tablespoons worth, not even. Just gonna be a little bit in there. Of course, if you want this, I'm trying to make this somewhat healthy. Uh, you could go nuts with the butter for a sauce. Butter on fish is awesome. You just, you can't, there's nothing you can substitute with, you know, if you, especially most seafood. You know, lobster, you gotta have butter, you know. But anyway, just a little bit of butter for flavor. But I also have some uh, extra virgin olive oil. Now we are gonna be tasting this. I wouldn't use a really cheap oil for this, but you don't need really expensive oil either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, about two-thirds oil to one-third butter. So I'm just going to eyeball this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Then in here, I should have grabbed a spoon or something to mix that. Um, just some thyme. Now I do have fresh herbs available to me. Uh, one of my best friends, Hannah, she's got a huge garden and all kinds of herbs in there. But I'm not going to bug her right now, even though she's not too far from me. I'm just going to use the thyme I have in the house, which happens to be dried. So just a little pinch. And we're good to go. Now, I'm going to chop up a lemon and a lime. And I'm just going to grab my EDC knife, which, no, is not the Sebenza. Uh, although I just started carrying the Sebenza. Got a new knife in a trade, so I've been using that. And that is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So, awesome knife. Today, we're going to be using it to chop up our citrus here. First, the lime. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to use one half to squeeze the juice out into our bowl here. Citrus on fish just goes. It is just awesome. And I love, I love the mix of uh, lemon and lime together. Of course, you can just use lime. Or excuse me, just just lemon is more common. But I like the combination here. So I'll just give that a good squeeze. A little tip for your citrus stuff or anything you're juicing. If you throw it in the microwave for about 15 to 20 seconds, it kind of breaks up all the individual cells on the inside. Now you can get one of those special juicers or whatever. You could, I mean, I'm not trying to do this because I'm trying to stay clean, but really if you take your, your pointer finger and knuckle like this and you get in there and you just just work your finger in there, and uh, just break it all up to get all the juice you possibly can out of it. But anyway, that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is before I juice this other half, I'm going to take a nice little slice out of here. 
because I want that for the garnish on the fish when I'm all done. Even though it's just me and I'm weird like that, I still like it to look nice. So now we're gonna juice the other half. I know this isn't very exciting watching me squeeze a you know half of a, a lime. <laughs> but it's all part of the video. Get that all in there. Alright, same deal with the lemon, only I'm going to uh, save two slices of lemon. You can also roll it, that also helps. You know, after you take it out of the microwave, just roll on your on a flat surface. What you're doing is breaking up all the cells on the inside to release all the juice. All right. So I'm going to cut this slightly off center. And from rolling it and doing the microwave, it just juiced all over the place. So here's some of our lemon. And of course, I'm going to go back and take the seeds out as well. Something we don't want on the fish. That'll certainly ruin your day if you bite into a seed, crack a tooth or something. It's just not pleasant. Okay. And of course, do my two slices here. Just for the garnish. And we're juicing a lemon. It's starting to get slippery here. Just could keep turning around. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Although it's not a big deal. Try not to be messy here. Okay. That's enough. All right, let me get all cleaned up and then I'm all juiced. Yeah, I was going to serve um, a baked potato or I actually have sweet potatoes in the house too. Or maybe even some rice or something on the side. But I got a little idea. So I have a fresh zucchini here uh, from the other day. I grilled up some vegetables and I made some grilled pizza, which actually I wish I would have filmed. It came out awesome. But anyway, um, I'm just going to cut this, slice it up into long uh, pieces so I can grill this as well. And I've got the paramilitary too. And I'm going to knock off the, uh, the end here. I'm slicing this on an angle here so that they don't fall to the grill. If I were to slice this like say cucumber for a salad or something, all those little tiny little pieces, it's going to fall through too easily. So you want to cut this on an angle. Now this is slipping around a little bit, so let me give you a little tip here on the bottom. Just come across, main frame, yeah. Just come across the bottom, just do a quick little slice like that. That will keep it completely flat against your board so you don't cut yourself. You know it doesn't roll around and you end up cutting your fingers. All right. So I'm going to cut these, not really thin, but uh, I want them to all cook evenly, so it's just got to be consistent. Alright, now what I'm going to do, is because these pieces are fairly thick here, I'm going to put this on the top portion of my grill, okay, because there's a lot of meat here, a vegetable, that you have to cook. If you threw this on the bottom with the high heat, you'd char the outside and the inside would be very, um, there'd be too much bite to it, it'd be raw. So, this would be slow cooked on the top, and of course, it'd be spread out a little bit with the fish on it, I think it'd be awesome. So anyway, this is scrap, this is scrap, that's garbage, and all I'm going to do is lightly coat this with some olive oil, a little salt and pepper, boom, on the grill, we're good to go. Got the grill at about 350, 400 degrees. Gonna open it all up. Now I don't want huge flames, but I want it nice and hot. First thing you gotta do is clean it. Scrub it down, especially for this fish. If you get all kinds of crap stuck to it, your fish might stick to the grill. So give it a good cleaning. It's always a good idea to do this when it's hot. It's a lot easier to take everything off. It is stuck to it. Okay. So, while I'm cleaning this, or the first thing I want to do once it is clean, is throw our vegetables on there. Alright, so I'm actually going to shut this, let that cook for a little bit while we prep our fish. Now, all I'm doing for the fish is taking the sauce, which I mixed. Okay, remember we have our little bit of butter in there. Uh, well, a third butter, two thirds uh, olive oil, like a good quality olive oil. We have uh, a little bit of dried thyme. We have uh, the juice of one lemon and the juice of one lime. Okay, seeds removed. So that's all that's going on with that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of fish here. And I'm just going to coat it. 
Very simple. Now a basing brush would be best for this, but you know what? I just don't have one. So what do you think of that? So instead, I'm just gonna spoon it on. Kind of rub it in a little bit. Now when we throw this uh, fish on the grill, what we're going to do is we're going to put it the skin side um, up. So what I'm putting this, um, I guess you can call it a sauce, on right now is going to go directly facing the grill. That's going to cook for about two minutes. After two minutes, we have the tricky part of flipping it over. Once we flip it over, we're going to continue to baste the uh, top with our sauce as the bottom cooks. Now you only want about four or five minutes, depending on the size of fish. So it's really, it's all experimental to me. Haven't done any of this before, but uh, I'm hoping it works out. Saw a couple of videos on it. YouTube is awesome. Not, I don't just make videos, I watch them too. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of great information out there. So anyway, I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit, do its thing, get all the flavors kind of melding together. And when the grill is hot enough, or I think it's hot enough, uh, we'll throw it on and we'll go from there. And the trick for the fish is cooking spray. Now this happens to be the grilling version, which I think is just gimmicky. It's supposed to have a, it says higher temperature formula. Whatever. It's all, it all works. I've used regular stuff for a long time, so give the can a good little shake. You want to spray down everywhere that that fish is going to touch. Now this will help with the, the steak, of course, too, but it's not necessary. I don't really have problems with steak sticking ever. But the fish is going to go to the right here. Now you have to be careful because this will flare up when you have the fire on so just take note of that don't burn your house down and then blame me but nice liberal coating do a little on the other side just for good measure all right so that's the trick cooking spray and don't store it, I was just about to put it next to the grill, don't store it by the grill, it's an aerosol can, that's heat, they don't mix, so don't do that. And once you throw a piece of meat on the grill, you're not supposed to touch it, you let it do its thing, don't poke at it, don't move it around, because every, all the uh, contact area where it's touching the metal, it's going to stick to it, originally. And then when you have those grill marks, those are just basically their burnt areas. But at first, it's going to stick to it. So you don't want to, if I go pulling it off, it's going to rip. It's going to be horrible. You don't want to do that. You kind of throw it on there and then try to forget about it. So anyway, there's the steak. And now the tricky part, the fish. All right. I actually just grabbed my knife and I cut the fish in half for the purpose of the flipping being easier and handling it. So I cut my fish into two pieces. So anyway, here's the one piece. Again, with all that nice juice or sauce. Skin side up. And the other piece, if I can get it off the paper here. Just like so. So I'm going to now close the grill. And this is going to get, I'm going to keep an eye on this. Now the steak, I, I'm used to cooking steak. The fish, it's all new to me. So I'm going to keep this like this. And in two minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to flip it. Steak. Steak we could flip. Okay. And our fish. A little peek. Really should be using um, spatula for this. Flip it over. Little pieces. Okay, now once you turn this, you can't handle it a lot because the fish is cooking. Now I don't have the grill marks I want, but it does have the um, the whole surface is cooked how I want it. So now it's gonna wait. We're gonna cook this for five minutes, just like this. Okay. Okay, I'm back for a second. Um, I was wondering why the grill wasn't getting as hot as I wanted to and I realized that I am running out of propane which is horrible 
uh, especially since I'm making a video on it, but this is also my dinner. So I'm not going 100% for a presentation here. If the grill was screaming hot, it would come out perfect. You get the grill marks, the whole deal, it would be awesome. But now, my goal is hopefully to just cook the food through. <laughs> this is not a cooking show. I don't have a prepared dish ready to show you, you know, hitting off, hidden off camera. Uh, this is just real. This is my dinner. <laughs> so, it's pretty funny, but, uh, yeah, just a little tip for me to you. And this won't happen again to me, but you should always have a spare uh, tank of propane if you're grilling. Because uh, you don't want this to happen. So, anyway, what I did was I lowered the um, zucchini to the bottom so I can cook a little faster now and that's it um, I'll get back with you when everything's all cooked alright guys so there it is um, everything was cooked perfectly um, actually I'm not sure something's wrong with my burners because my my uh, propane tank is is still pretty heavy and I'm getting a, a, a constant flow I'm not sure why I can't get that you know really high flame I'll look into it another time but uh, all the the food was cooked perfectly I don't have those magical grill marks, you know, that you like to see, but everything looks awesome. I'll let you know how it tastes like in a second. But I'm just doing the finishing touches here on the fish. We have our sauce that we basted our fish with. I want to just do a little bit of a spoonful on top. Nothing crazy. Just to get those fresh flavors at the end. So, there it is. Beautiful piece of grilled salmon with some... Um, some steak, some London broil, and grilled zucchini. I think it came out awesome looking, very professional for a single dude. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I gotta give it a try now. Let you know how I, uh, what I think of it. I'm gonna use the same utensils here as I did to cut everything up, <clears throat> as to not make new dishes or anything, but kinda weird going around the uh, tripod. So first, the fish. Actually, let me eat off to the side here. It's just a little. There we go. First the fish. Little piece here. Pulls right off the skin beautifully. Again, salmon, we're not eating the skin here. So just the fish. Wow. <laughs> I know that's usually my response when I cook something is wow. And that gets pretty lame after a while, but I really can't express to you guys how perfect this is. It came out perfectly. I mean, I don't need the knife here. I don't know why I'm even using it. But, um, perfect, flaky, juicy. I could taste the citrus. I taste the thyme, the herbs. It is just, it is a beautiful piece of fish. So. Mm-mm-mm. Scrumptious. You see how it pulls just away from the uh, skin like that? It's exactly what you want. Now, like I said, I'm not a huge fish guy. I don't love, get out of here, Ant. Every time we do a cooking video, I got, you know, Mother Nature taking a, a cameo. Not fair, man. Mmm. <clears throat> awesome. All right, I'm gonna try a little piece of the steak here, one to broil. By the way, my preferred steak knife, the cold steel kitchen set. Awesome. Cooked exactly how I like it. <clears throat> I'm at a loss for words because it is delicious and I don't want to say wow again. That um that garlic really does a number on the meat. It's so I mean you could take just a bare London broil, throw it on the grill, and it'll taste great. But what the garlic does for it, it's just a whole new dimension. It's really, really good. It's very savory, very simple, salt and pepper, but I get that explosion of the delicious roasted garlic flavor really really awesome and of course our veggie the zucchini holy crap tastes like zucchini who would have thunk it all right guys i kind of want to end the video here because i'm ready to enjoy the rest of my dinner it is amazing came out great not exactly sure what happened with the grill deal, but, you know, I'll figure it out. Um, still turned out great. I wish I would have had the grill marks. It would have cooked just a little bit faster had I had the proper heat level. But uh, other than that, I mean, this is, like I said, this is real life. It's not a cooking show. 
this is Jeff Smith on his porch <laughs> cooking on his grill oops all of a sudden there's a problem with the grill let's see what happens from there you know nothing scripted I didn't pull this out of the oven you know ready to go off film this is just uh, how it turned out but it turned out great it tastes awesome and I'm gonna enjoy it right now so once again please everyone have a very enjoyable safe 4th of July weekend and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day take care guys